Hello everybody and welcome again to Crosswinds. If I have not met you yet, my name is Pastor Pete. Now I know over the period of the next week, there's perhaps a thousand people gonna watch this message. You're one of them. And do you know what? Out of those people watching, I gotta tell, tell you, I don't even know who some of you are. I look at your names online, I think, who are these folks? I'm grateful that you are here. But even if I do not know you, I wanna tell you something. I pray for you every single day. I don't need to know you to pray for you. And I've been doing that. Not only am I praying for you, but I'm also praying over myself and praying over you that God will do great things in you. You see, I'm a firm believer of declaring who we are in Christ. In fact, the Bible tells us that we're to call the things that are not as though they are. Sometimes you just don't feel good. Sometimes you don't feel like you're a winner. Sometimes you don't feel like you're on the upside but you are. And so I would like to start out our message today when we're, call, when we're dealing with connecting with God. The point of it is, who are we? And so I wanna pray over you before we go any farther, but I wanna pray great things upon you. Lord Jesus, I pray for all of those that are watching right now, that they receive a great anointing of God an electric moment in the Holy Spirit. For those that are not feeling good, Lord, that you would, they would be healed. For those that are struggling in our job, they would find relief. For those that are may, maybe having a difficulty in their finances, Lord God, you would miraculously bring finance to them, bring supply into their life. To those whose families are struggling, God, may there be peace in the family. To those who are wondering what they need to do with their soul, that God, you would just invigorate them, ignite them, enlighten them, that their soul is taken care of only in you. Lord, we know we are in the hollow of your hand and nobody can take us away. Lord, we are so grateful for you and I pray that this message today would just be something that brings all of us, including myself, even as I'm speaking it, to another level. And I ask this in the name of Jesus, amen. Do you know that God didn't give the job of giving the good news to the world, to angels? He didn't give the job of bringing the good news to demons, to principalities or powers or to gods or demigods that aren't gods at all. No, he gave you and me, his children, the job of bringing the good news. And that's who we are. We're representatives of God Almighty. Let's go into Hebrews again. That's our theme for the next month. And in Hebrews 1, 14 through 2, 9, we say, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? So stop right here. We learned last week that if you have given your heart to Jesus Christ, you have angels surrounding you. You have angels that are sent to minister to you. And so we continue to read. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. And for since the message spoken through the angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. It's not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we're speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified. And here it is, church, listen, all you that are paying attention right now, what is mankind? That you're mindful of them, the son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the angels and you crown them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. That's talking about us. And in putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at the present, we do not see everything subject to them. So how do we walk through this process? First of all, we need to ask the question, what is man? Church, 
be real. You and I are nothing more than specks on a speck in the universe. Specks on a speck out there in the universe. We are nothing. A speck is on a speck is something you can't even see. But in spite of that, God decided to make us a showcase if he is allowed to be at the center. We are the showcase of God in all the universe. Romans says it so great. I want to read this scripture to you. Romans 8, 17 through 18. And since we are his true children, I want to stop right here. The Bible says anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord is a child of the living God. And so if you've given your heart to Jesus, you are his true children, and this is talking about you. We, the, who? The true children. We qualify to share all his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined in Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. Did you hear that? All that he is and all that he has. We will experience being glorified with him, provided that we accept his suffering as our own. But I am convinced of this, the Apostle Paul said, I'm convinced of this, that any suffering we may endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of the glory that is about to be unveiled within us. We might have a little bit of suffering right now, and I know not everybody that life is perfect and things are perfect, but we also have the magnitude of the greatness of God inside of us. And the apostle, if, if you could have a little scale here, he said, yeah, you might have some suffering, but that suffering is nothing. It weighs nothing compared to the magnitude of the greatness of God. So remember who you are. Yeah, you're nothing more than a speck on a speck, and neither am I. But we are the righteousness of God in Christ, and he has decided to put us on a showcase to let the whole universe out there know that we are his children and we are at the center of his love. Second of all, at present time, we don't see everything that is subject to Christ. His purchase gave us freedom. We've learned that. I'll repeat it again. But if the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. His purchase gave us freedom, but we must continue to walk out our freedom. This is where we want to stop for a minute. Continue to walk out our freedom. One of the great, greatest moments in the American history was in, when Thomas Jefferson purchased what we call the Louisiana Purchase for the United States of America. Approximately $15 million. At the time, it seemed like a whole lot. But the United States of America exists the way it is because of the Louisiana Purchase. Now, he purchased it. We owned it. America owned it from Canada all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and all the way across through the Southwest and in, this, in the South and the Midwest, that whole middle of America, that slice of pie. It was purchased and it was ours. But guess what? Nobody was living in it. No Americans were living in it at the time. Oh, there were settlers. I understand that. And so he commissioned two men, Lewis and Clark, to go out. And they went on one of the greatest adventures of all time to go in through America. And for two years, they charted the course and charted the purchase and staked our claim. And then the people of America began to move through the Midwest and down into the South and down into Louisiana and down towards Texas. And the point of the matter is, even though it was purchased, it was all the Americans' right to have, we didn't do it. It needed to be worked out and walked out. So what about you? Jesus purchased the great salvation you have on the cross. It's yours. He purchased your freedom. It's yours. We just read to you in Romans that we are heirs of all that God has and that the magnitude of the blessing of God is more than we can understand. But you have to walk it out. Let's now bring it back home. You might be watching this in your car. You might be watching this in your house. You're watching it through YouTube. You might be in a park looking on uh, your Facebook page, watching us right there. You're free. You're free to go and make the greatest life possible. But if you're in your car, you gotta step out of the car. If you're in the house, you gotta get out that front door. If you're in the park, you gotta get up and walk. You say, where should I go? Well, just pray and ask God. And God will tell you because he gave you this freedom. Some of you, you're free to go back to school. Go! Some of you are free to move to a different town. Go! Some of you are free 
to go and begin a business. Get going. Some of you are free to ask that woman to marry you. Do it. Some of you are free and your time for you to start having children with your spouse. Have at it. Some of you are free to change your life, but you got to walk it out. Change doesn't begin by sitting. Change begins by walking. You've got to walk in your freedom. If you're free to go to college, you've been waiting. I'm telling you, God says go. There's nothing wrong with going to college. So what do you need to do? Get up, get on a computer, maybe go down to a college, wherever you're at. Some of you are watching in Florida, I know that. Some of you are watching in Oregon, I know that. Some in Texas, I know that. And in many other states. Go and do it. Start the business, make the plan. You're free. You're free to take control of the bo your body. If you're struggling with different aspects, you're free to take control. Because he whom the sun sets free is what? Free indeed. But you gotta walk it out. I really believe that most believers never achieve, and you've heard me say this before, but I'll say it again, never achieve their full capacity of freedom. I put it kind of in a different way, but we, we, we don't achieve our full capacity of freedom because we don't get up and walk it out. See, daily, we're on the verge of a great reward. Every single day, we're on the verge of a great reward. Today is a great day. The Bible said today is the day of your salvation. Today is the new beginning. Today is the day that you receive all that you can from the Lord. See, we limit people and ourselves in our own minds. The scripture I learned a long time ago, I was 18 when I learned the scripture and it says, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are below for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's found in Colossians. That we are, we're limiting ourselves. We limit others because of our own mind. But see, God has given us the power of choice, but not the power of consequence. If you choose to live in the freedom of, uh, of God, then he, will bring the anointing to you to walk in that freedom. Let me repeat it. If you choose to live and work in the anointing of God that he has ordained for you, then he will do what he needs to do to make that freedom be the maximum potential for your life. You say, wow, I never thought about it like that, Pastor Pete. I know a lot of people haven't. You see, we are responsible for our choice. Did I just say that? We're responsible for our choice. I'm responsible to get out of the car and start walking. I'm responsible to get out of the house. I'm responsible to get off the bench. I'm responsible to get on the computer and enroll. I'm responsible to go out and build the business. I'm responsible to pray. I am responsible to read the word. I'm responsible to seek with all of my heart and all of my mind and all of my strength. And the Lord said, you don't have to worry about how it's gonna turn out because I will take care of the rest. Matthew 6.33 says it so wonderful. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Stop right here before we move on. Remember, we have to make the choice, and he'll deal with the consequences. Here's the choice. Seek first the kingdom of God. I have to seek the kingdom of God. I have to seek his righteousness. And then what will God do? All things will be added unto me, food, clothing, shelter, transportation, the anointing of God, the relationship that I need. That's the Lord's promise. See, in Christ, the physical side of man and the mental side become a being with a purpose. I'm gonna let you just soak that in for a minute. It's right there on your screen. In Christ, the physical side of man and the mental side become a being with a purpose. We in Christ have authority, but that authority must be exercised. That authority must be worked out. That authority must be used. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different today. I've just spoken to you between 10 and 12 minutes. Normally we stretch this out to about 18. But what I want you to do is I'm gonna invite in a second I'm going to invite Pastor Dave Schmidt, one of our associates here, to come up and lead you in communion. So while I'm talking, get up and go to the kitchen. If you're not in a car, get up and go to the kitchen. 
Go somewhere, get, get a cracker and something to commune with. It doesn't have to be grape juice. I mean, we like to do it, that's why we've been doing it for a while, but in reality, just get a piece of bread, just get a cracker. You can use a Ritz. <laughs> if you don't even have a Ritz, maybe you got an animal cracker. You can do it. I'm not making light of communion, but something that you can just physically touch, physically see, physically break, and physically eat. And then get something to drink, even if it's just water. Maybe even have soda. I mean, this might be weird to you. You might be sitting there, I've never done communion with soda and an animal cracker in my life. It's not what you take, it's who you take it with. It's not what you take, it's who you take it with. So we're gonna commune with Jesus. And I'd like you to do me a favor. As we take this communion, I would like you to think as Pastor Dave leads in a minute, I'd like you to just think, Lord, what do I need to get up and work out? Lord, give me direction. Lord, during this communion time, see for me when I take communion, in my mind and in my spirit, I, I just kind of block out the people around me and, and I just, I need to close my eyes. So I just close my eyes and I just think, Lord, and I, I begin to talk to the Lord about something that's important. Today, understand who you are. You are a child of the living God. Understand what he has done. He has given you all that he has. You are an heir and a joint heir with Jesus. And understand how he is gonna work it through you. You do it, he'll answer the call. You do it, he'll answer the call. Now, right before David comes, if you're watching this and you die tonight, do you know if you're gonna go to heaven or hell? You see, we're really, we think communion is very important to where you shouldn't take communion unless you've given your heart to Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And so if you're watching, maybe it's Tuesday. Let's just pretend it's Tuesday. Oh, right, some of you are watching on Saturday. I understand that, but just somebody's watching on a Tuesday. We always have people watching on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday. So maybe you're watching on Tuesday and you can't answer the question, I'm going to heaven. You can't say, I know without a doubt I'm going to heaven. You just can't say it. Then today, I'd like you to do me a favor. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus so you can have that communion, that communal moment with the Him. And so, if you'd like to give your heart to the Lord right now, just blink, just blink. I can't see you, God can. I like to use the blink as a point of contact for those watching online. You'd be part of us in contact with us. And if you blinked, I'm gonna say a prayer and I would ask you to repeat it after me. Two things. One, if you're by yourself, just say it out loud. There's something about saying it out loud and say it, don't whisper it. If you're all by yourself, say it like I'm saying it, say it out loud. If you're with people that you feel comfortable with and you can speak it with them, go for it. But if you're with people and you don't feel comfortable, say it in your mind. The Lord knows and the Lord hears. So here you go. If you want to give your heart to the Lord today, if today is your day and accept the great gift of the Lord, repeat after me, dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sin. I believe you died for me and I believe you rose again with your help. From this day forward, I will live for you. Now, if you gave your heart to Christ after communion, click on the link attached to this video and they will bring you to a place where you can begin to walk the process. Remember I said you got to get up and walk. You got to make movement. Click on the link is a movement towards God. Here the Bible says that you walk towards the Lord and the Lord will walk right towards you. So please do that right now. Get your stuff ready for communion. I'd like to invite Pastor Dave to come in and lead you, and I'll come back right after that. Hi, everyone. I'm privileged to be a part of uh, leading you in communion today. I just want you to know that um, Pastor Pete started a, tra a tradition many years ago um, that we don't talk about a lot, but one of the things we do is we hold up our emblems before the Lord. And so when I get to that, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. But um, on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
One of the traditions we do here at Crosswinds is we hold up our bread before the Lord. So I just want to invite you to hold your bread up. As we do that, as we hold up the emblem of our Lord's body, we do it for really a couple of reasons. First of all, we do it because we want Jesus to be set before us. We need to understand that we fix our eyes on Jesus. When we hold the bread up, we're fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So when Pastor Pete has us hold our bread up before the Lord, not only are we fixing our eyes on Jesus, but we're also offering it to him as an offering. It's like offering our body to him, offering our mind to him, offering our soul to him. So today, as we hold our bread up to the Lord, I just want you to, to recognize the significance of this moment, this moment of communing with the Lord, of, of listening to his most intimate thoughts and feelings and sharing yours. So let's hold our bread up to the Lord and let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who went to the cross to bear our sin on his body. So as we hold up this emblem of his body, we recognize that he did something truly remarkable. He took all of our sin and all of our shame and he gave us all of his righteousness. He gave us access to divine healing. He gave us unlimited access to you, Lord. And so as we eat this bread together, we remember Jesus' body broken and bruised for us. Let's eat. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So as we hold up this emblem of Jesus' blood, again, keeping our eyes on Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus, we commune with God by participating in, in, in communion with him. So as we drink this cup, we recognize the blood that was shed that washes our sin. Without the shedding of a blood, the Bible says there is no appropriation for sin, no propitiation for sin. So as we drink this cup, do so remembering Jesus and offering yourself to him. Amen. Let's drink together. So thank you for sharing in the Lord's Supper with me. Here's Pastor Pete. You know, this has been a great service. I trust that you were touched by the Lord during communion and during our message. And if you uh, would do us a huge favor, if you would share this with somebody, everybody, if you can share it, if you're online through social media, it is so easy. Just click share right now in your social media page and it'll get out to all the people that you are connected to. Please do that. I wanna tell you that our giving has been fantastic. We've been doing so many great things. We heard from Convoy of Hope this week that they are in uh, where Hurricane Ida went through. They are in there. They have numerous trucks and tractors. I've seen and trailers. I've seen the pictures of them there giving out water and bags of sanitation equipment for like soap and toothpaste and toothbrushes. And because your giving is doing great, we had another group of people that gave this last week. Maybe it was you. I'm going to tell you that is going out tomorrow. Or not, not tomorrow. That, this is Saturday. That'll go out Monday. It will be sent out. I give you my word on that. I can't wait to give it out. And I'm so grateful. If you haven't become part of our giving team, 84321 is text to give. Give online. If you're watching this sermon at our website, you can do it right there. There's a little give button. Push on it. Maybe you get you want to get a mobile app, securegive.com. Once you register on text to give our secure give, it's there. And boom, after that, you can just give literally that fast. You can do it in service. You can send it to us at 2100 El Rancho Drive. And the, and the address is right there. Well, I hope you've had a great day. I've had a great time ministering to you along with receiving from the Lord with you. So let's just all declare who we are. This is what we need to say as we walk out. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I am not alone. I am a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. God bless you. Have the best night ever.